jurisdiction. If you're going to read the syllabus issued by the Supreme Court, ang sabi doon, as far as jurisdiction is concerned, you have to study these eight items. But take note, yung eight items na yan, nanganganak pa yan. But in this video, what we're going to discuss is letter A muna, the classification of jurisdiction. Before we go to the classes of jurisdiction, what is jurisdiction first? That is the power of the court to hear and decide cases and to execute the judgment thereon. If you will be asked what is jurisdiction, alam ko ang isusulat ninyo is hearing and deciding cases. But please, wag kayong mag-stop dyan. Please include in your answer the power also of the court to execute the decision rendered. That is the more complete definition of jurisdiction. Take note also that jurisdiction is lodged with the court and definitely not with the judge. It is not the power of a judge but of the court. A court can exist without a judge in the same manner that a judge can also exist without a court. In fact, meron na ngayon tinatawag na judges at large. That is your RA number 11459, otherwise known as the Judges at Large Act of 2019. Sino ba itong mga judges at large? They are the judges who have no permanent salas and may be assigned by the Supreme Court as acting or assisting judges to any RTC in the Philippines as public interest may require. The said judges at large are entitled to salaries, privileges, allowances, emoluments, benefits, ranks, and title of a RTC judge. Meron din mga MTC na judges at large. Take note ha, baka kasi tanungin lang kayo sa legal ethics kung sino itong mga judges at large. So again ha, these are the judges who have no permanent salas. What are the classes of jurisdiction? You have general, special or limited, original, exclusive, exclusive original, appellate, concurrent, delegated, territorial. But if you're going to read the syllabus, ang sabi doon, as far as classification of jurisdiction is concerned, you have to distinguish original from appellate, general from special, and exclusive from concurrent. We'll distinguish now original jurisdiction from appellate. Question, meron bang original jurisdiction si Supreme Court? Answer is, yes, that is very clear according to, your according to our 1987 Constitution, Article 8, Section 5. The Supreme Court shall exercise original jurisdiction over cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers and consuls, and over petitions for CPM, Coaranto, and Habeas Corpus. How about si Court of Appeals? Meron din ba siyang original jurisdiction? Answer is also yes. That is very clear according to your BP 129 Section 9. The Court of Appeals shall exercise original jurisdiction over CPM, Habeas Corpus, and Coaranto. How about si Regional Trial Court? Meron din ba siyang original jurisdiction? Answer is also yes. Very clear according to BP 129 Section 21. RTC shall exercise original jurisdiction over your CPM, um, Coaranto, Habeas Corpus, and injunction. Also, actions affecting ambassadors and other, other public ministers and consuls. So, if you will be asked what is original jurisdiction, that is the power of the court to hear a case for the first time. Huwag ba confused ha? Ang pinag-uusapan pa lang muna natin is original jurisdiction. Therefore, that is the power of the court to take judicial cognizance of a case instituted for judicial action for the first time under conditions provided for by law. And if you're going to distinguish that from your appellate jurisdiction, kung si original jurisdiction is, 
the court will be hearing the case for the first time. That is not the case if you're going to talk about appellate jurisdiction. Bakit? Because sa appellate jurisdiction, hindi na yan first time. That would be the second time or the third time. That Because in appellate jurisdiction, that is the authority of a court higher in rank to re-examine the final order or judgment of a lower court which tried the case which is now elevated for judicial review. Kaya pag, pag dinistinguished mo si original from appellate, si original is first time, si appellate is nire-examine niya na. So, hindi first time kay appellate. So, si Supreme Court ba? Meron bang appellate jurisdiction? Answer is yes. Very clear also, according to your 1987 Constitution, the Supreme Court shall have the power to review, revise, reverse, modify, or affirm on appeal or certiorari the final judgments and orders of lower courts. How about si Court of Appeals? Meron din ba siyang appellate jurisdiction? Answer is also yes. The CA shall exercise exclusive appellate jurisdiction over all final judgments, resolutions, orders, or awards of RTC and quasi-judicial agencies, instrumentalities, boards, or commission. That is also true when you talk about RTC. Si RTC meron siyang appellate jurisdiction over all cases decided by MTC. Next, we'll distinguish general jurisdiction from special. When we talk about general, that is the power of the court to hear all cases, to hear all controversies except those expressly withheld from the plenary powers of the court. Meron ba tayong court na merong general jurisdiction? Answer is yes. Your RTC is a court of general jurisdiction. In fact, kung meron kang kaso at hindi mo alam or hindi malinaw sa batas kung saan ifa-file sa ang quasi-judicial agency ang merong jurisdiction, tanong. Saan mo ngayon ito if a file? Where are you going to file that case? Answer is RTC. That is very clear according to your section 19, 9, number 6. How about special jurisdiction? Kung ang general jurisdiction is the power of the court to hear all cases, pag sinabi mo namang special, that is confined to particular cases particular cases or limited cases, the, uh, the jurisdiction is considered special when it restricts the jurisdiction of the court only to particular cases and subject to such limitations as may be provided by the governing law. Section 23 of your BP 129, it allows the Supreme Court to designate certain branches of the RTC to handle exclusively criminal cases, juvenile and domestic re domestic relation cases, agrarian cases, urban land reforms cases. Kaya meron ka ngayon na family courts, drug courts, commercial courts. That is because of your section 23 of BP 129. Si MTC Ren is merong special jurisdiction. The um, MTC has that power to issue uh, to hear and decide petitions for a writ of habeas corpus or applications for bail. When we go to the jurisdiction of MTC, we will be discussing that thoroughly. 2017 bar exam question, Santa filed a case against IRA in the RTC. Unknown to the parties, the case was raffled to an RTC designated as a special commercial court. That RTC rendered a judgment that is not favorable to ERA. Therefore, itong si ERA naghanap ng butas at nakita niya na hindi pala yon regular court. That is a special commercial court. So, ERA approaches you and wants you to file a petition to have the judgment annulled for lack of jurisdiction. Question. Can you annul the judgment on the basis of jurisdiction? Balikan natin ang facts. What is the case filed? That is an action for specific performance. 
An action for specific performance is an action that is not capable of pecuniary estimation. So, sino ang may jurisdiction sa action for specific performance? Answer is RTC. Saan finile ni Santa ang case? Finile niya sa RTC. Sino ang nagrender ng decision? Ang nagrender ng decision is RTC. Ano ang naging problema? That RTC is designated as a special commercial court. But ano ang sabi ng Supreme Court? Even if that court has been designated as a special commercial court, still it does not shed the RTC's general jurisdiction over ordinary civil cases. The designation of special commercial courts was merely intended as a procedural tool to expedite the resolution of commercial cases. This designation was not made by statute but only by an, by an internal Supreme Court rule under its authority to promulgate rules. That is the reason why hindi ka pwedeng mag-file ng petition for annulment of judgment on the ground of jurisdiction kasi si RTC kahit naka-designate siya as a special commercial court, meron pa rin naman talaga siyang jurisdiction. That bar exam question is an actual case, the case of Gonzales versus GGH Land Incorporated. But baliktad ang nangyari sa kaso na ito because a commercial case was was filed but that commercial case was wrongly raffled to a regular branch. This is the reason why si Supreme Court in this case is naglabas ng guidelines. Sabi ni Supreme Court, pag nangyari ulit ang ganitong situation, this would be now the guidelines. First scenario, if a commercial case is filed before the proper RTC but that commercial case is wrongly raffled to its regular branch, then what would be the courses of action? Number one, if the RTC has only one branch designated as a special commercial court, then the case shall be referred to the executive judge for redacting as a commercial case and thereafter assigned to the sole special branch. But if that RTC has multiple branches designated as a special commercial courts, then the case shall be referred to the executive judge for redacting as a commercial case and raffled off among those special branches. How about if that RTC has no uh, internal branch designated as a special commercial court? Ano ang mangyayari ngayon? That case shall be referred to the nearest RTC with a designated special commercial court branch as long as it is within the judicial region. So, yan ang magiging guideline. Balik rin natin ang situation, kagaya dun sa binasa nating bar exam question. What if an, it is an ordinary civil case filed, but that ordinary civil case is wrongly raffled to a branch designated as a special commercial court? In that case, what will happen? The case shall be referred to the executive judge for redacting as an ordinary civil case. How about the filing fees? Kasi dyan nagkakatalo yung filing fees. As far as filing fees is concerned, all transfer or raffle of cases is subject to the payment of the appropriate docket fees in case of any difference. On the other hand, all docket fees already paid shall be duly credited and if there is an excess, it will be refunded. Ang sabi pa ng Supreme Court dito sa case ni Gonzales, pinagalitan kasi kaya nagkaroon ng confusion na raffle yung commercial case sa, sa isang regular branch is because of the designation na lito siguro yung mga staff. Kaya ang sabi ng Supreme Court, the court now requires that all initiatory pleading should state the action's nature both in its caption and body. Otherwise, 
the initiatory pleading may be dismissed without prejudice to its refiling after due rectification. The, this last procedural rule is prospective in application. So take note ha, kaya dapat yung inyong mga complaint or your initiatory pleading is very clear when it comes to your caption and body or when it comes to your prayer. How about exclusive jurisdiction? That is the power to hear a case to the exclusion of all other courts. Para lang din yung lalake. Kung meron ka ng girlfriend, exclusive ka na sa girlfriend mo. Exclude mo na dapat yung ibang babae. Take note also that there is an exclusive original. Exclusive na original pa. When we say about when we talk about exclusive original, that is the power of the court to hear a case for the first time and to the exclusion of all other courts. Marami kang makikita dyan sa BP 129 na exclusive original ang jurisdiction ng RTC, MTC, and Court of Appeals. We said that the Supreme Court has original jurisdiction over your petitions for CPM, Coaranto, and Habeas Corpus. That is also the same with the Court of Appeals. Meron din silang original jurisdiction and also RTC. Meron din siyang original jurisdiction. How about for your cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls? Si Supreme Court merong original jurisdiction. Si RTC ay meron ding original jurisdiction over cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls. Take note ha, ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is original jurisdiction, that is hearing a case for the first time. Magkaiba ang original jurisdiction from exclusive jurisdiction. So, kahit sila ay may original jurisdiction, but take note that they have a concurrent jurisdiction. What is a concurrent jurisdiction? That is the power conferred upon different courts to hear a case at the same stage in the same or different judicial territories. This is the case of concurrent jurisdiction. The other name of your concurrent jurisdiction is confluent and coordinate. So if you're going to uh, distinguish exclusive from concurrent, syempre si exclusive is to the exclusion of other courts. Ito namang concurrent is sinishare niya ang jurisdiction with other courts. What else? What are the other cases where in the court exercises concurrent jurisdiction? That is your writ of habeas data. If you read Section 3, you can file your writ of habeas data in the Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, RTC, and Sandigan Bayan. How about the writ of amparo? You can file it also in SC, CA, RTC, and Sandigan Bayan. How about your writ of habeas corpus? You can file it in the SC, CA, and RTC. RTC na family court. How about your writ of continuing mandamus? You can file it in SC, CA, and RTC. But for your writ of kalikasan, you can file it only in the Supreme Court and Court of Appeals. So, yan ang ating mnemonics para mas madaling ma-recall. For your Supreme Court, H-A-C-C-K, HAC, HAC. That is the same also with your Court of Appeals. But when you go to the RTC, tanggalin mo na ngayon si letter K naging HAC na lang. H-A-C-C. And when you go to the Sandigan Bayan, naging HA na lang. HAC, 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 HA. So ganyan ang ating mnemonics. Sana makatulong para mas madali ninyong ma-recall. Take note, however, that kahit sinasabi ng batas na merong concurrent jurisdiction, si Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, and RTC for these cases, it does not mean that you party can go directly to a higher court. 
Kasi mostly, ang nangyayari dyan, si party gustong dumiretso agad ng Supreme Court para mas mabilis na. But ano ang sabi ng jurisprudence? The concurrence of the jurisdiction does not give the petitioner the unrestricted freedom of choice of court forum. Take note ha, the concurrence does not give the petitioner the unrestricted freedom of choice of court forum. Bakit? Because you have to observe the hierarchy of courts. In the next video, we will be going to discuss the principle or the doctrine of hierarchy of courts.